Hey guys, Jostein from yourdino.com here. Today I'm going to show you a new feature, and that is internal dyno losses. Now, of course, a dyno system with a car connected has a lot of losses, and we don't really care about where they are coming from if we are measuring engine power and engine torque, because in the retardation phase, we measure all the losses wherever they are coming from, and we just deduct them so that the engine power and engine torque are not affected by, by those losses. But if you're looking at wheel torque and wheel power, and you want to know the power that is actually hitting the road, you need to remove those dyno internal losses. Okay, and they can be specified here. So they are given as a as a torque uh, as as a torque as a function of the dyno RPM. Okay, not the engine RPM, but the dyno RPM. Um, you can uh, add uh, points here uh, and uh, you know drag them up and down. As you will see, uh, the curve is trying to to do a, a, a curve fit. The program is trying to do a curve fit here because this loss uh, should always follow this kind of second order polynomial. Uh, so if you do, if you add your points correctly, they will line up nicely like that. You can also edit the losses uh, like that. Maybe easier in a table like this. Uh, anyway, it's uh, nice to see to see that uh, your points uh, fit uh, this this second order polynomial. Okay, how to get the dyno losses done? How should you? How can you know what is your dyno losses? So there are a couple of things you can do. The most easy one is to say I only care about the brake uh, fan, which is typically the biggest component, and then you look at the specification from your brake supplier, and they will typically give you uh, a torque versus uh, RPM, and you just edit it in just like that. It will then end up with a zero uh, here, zero. Zero RPM gives a zero drag. Um, you can do it a bit more accurately. You can actually measure it. And that's uh, what I'm going to show you how to do. So let's find out how we can actually measure the dyno losses. That's been done here. Uh, the part we are interested in is this part here. This is the wheel torque and uh, the wheel power. Uh, while the dyno is coasting down completely on its own. So what you have to do is to accelerate the dyno up uh, to uh, whatever max speed you, you can do, and then remove the motorcycle or uh, electric motor or whatever you're using to accelerate it, such that it can coast down without any anything connected. Then you will uh, notice the, the, the drag in the dyno itself in the coast down phase. And that's what you can see here. But before we dissect the numbers here, I have to show you a couple of things that you need to take care of when you do this uh, measurement here. The first one is that the moment of inertia that you set needs to be only the dyno's moment of inertia, right? So normally we use the dyno's moment of inertia plus the car's dyno, uh, moment of inertia. But now that we're just testing the dyno, of course, you only need to, do, to use the dyno's moment of inertia, right? So that's done here. Um, so that's how we do it, right? You have the dyno's moment of inertia here. This one doesn't change no matter what car you, you put on. And uh, under the run here, uh, you have this um, MOE setup. And here you add the drivetrain moment of inertia. This is part of what I'm going to show you afterwards. Is the, there is a, a wizard here to find the moment of inertia of the car, but ignore that for now. And the number here needs to be zero because we are only interested in the dyno's moment of inertia in this test. Okay. The other test, the other thing you need to take care of is if you go to RPM setup, you need to set the gear ratio to one, and that's because we are interested in the in the rollers or the the brakes. Uh, uh, RPM and not the engine RPM of whatever is accelerating the rollers. Okay, so it is to one. So that's done already, of course, before we, we did this here. So what can we see here? Well, there is um, actually, let's turn off the power because we don't really need the power. This is all we need. This is the dyno loss at the different RPMs of the, of the rollers. You can see it here. And that curve here needs to be put in here. 
of course with a different uh, uh, yeah, it's positive here while it is negative here so for example at a thousand you can see that uh, thousand rpm it is something something like uh, uh, what's it nine thirteen point eighty eight something like that I added it already so let's see what I added yeah thirteen point six yeah so it is um, uh, you try to find the most accurate number uh, at a few three four five locations on on the curve and then you add it uh, in here and if you do it correctly it should roughly follow a, a nice uh, uh, curve like that okay then you turn on uh, specify internal dyno losses and that's it really what we can do as a special test uh, after we have turned on this uh, uh, this uh, loss is to do uh, the same run again and uh, see what we get okay let's do that so we'll import the same run as we had uh, that's this one here <clears throat> and now of course uh, we are only again we are only measuring the losses uh, during the losses of the dyno during the retardation so the wheel power and wheel torque should hover around zero uh, right of course if you have a real car on real so on it you will see the the drivetrain losses uh, of the car and not the drivetrain losses of the of the dyno but since it's only the dyno here the wheel torque and wheel power should be around zero in the retardation phase Let's take a look. That looks pretty good, right? We are hovering here around zero on the uh, on the wheel torque and wheel power. So uh, that's pretty that's pretty good and as expected. Let's change the color here and then let's look at a couple of things. So if we look at the wheel torque here, we see now a clear difference between the two runs, just as expected. And the difference between them is, of course, the same as the difference uh, of, uh, of the, the two retardations, right? The, the losses in the dyno is the, real, is the difference. So you will see the same, of course, when you look at wheel power, just as we wanted. Okay, what if we take a look at the engine power? Uh, will it be different? No. The engine power between the two runs is exactly the same and that's what we said in the beginning when we calculate the engine power we deduct the losses wherever they are coming from so it does not impact the engine torque and engine power they are exactly the same so that's good and just as expected it is different on the wheel numbers another thing we can look at now is uh, the the drag itself or the loss itself they can turn them on here they are here so uh, if you want to take a look at them uh, here are the, the curves for that okay good um, for those of you who are interested in uh, wheel power and wheel torque you have now have a new feature to play with for those of you working with engine power and engine torque you don't really need to care about it but it is always nice to know isn't it okay i hope you like it thank you